All right. Now I'm going to be preaching this morning and this evening on the same topic. This is going to be a two-part sermon just because the content matter, as I was preparing for this, the content matter is just too much to try to cram into one sermon. And I think this is actually very, very important and something that in our current society, in our day and age, is something that ought to be preached on probably on a regular basis. And the title of my sermon today is The Sins of Social Media. Because there is, there is a lot of damage that can be done these days online. And what we need to be able to do as, as the times change around us and as culture changes, and as different technology presents itself, we need to use biblical truths and biblical principles in order to apply it to our day-to-day -day life and what we're exposed to on a regular basis. So obviously during the time of Jesus Christ and before they didn't have all this digital technology and, and these means of communication and all of these things at their fingertips and at their disposal. But all those things are just tools there's nothing really new about it. It's still just communication. It's still people talking. It's still, you know, um, conversations, all kinds of different things going on. But it's all the same stuff. So, but what we need to make sure that we're doing is applying Scripture properly and taking heed to ourselves. Because this, this age of the Internet and with social media, what, what it really is, it's like an alternate reality. It's, it's a really interesting phenomenon that, that has happened and that's taking place. There's an entire world that's all just online. And it's bizarre. It's, it, it, it's, it's kind of a weird, a weird thing. The way that people would act in person oftentimes is not the way that they present themselves or the way they would act or behave on the internet. The things that you would normally say to someone in person or the things you wouldn't say to someone in person and now all of a sudden it's fine to do so online and this is this is something that it spreads and and you can the, the more you see it happening the more likely you are to kind of join up and act the same way that other people are acting and um there, there's so much <laughs> there's so many different aspects that we need to make sure that we are keeping ourselves from getting into all kinds of, of horrendous sins, all just because it's easy and available at our fingertips and we could do so from the comfort of our own homes. There's, a, there's an aspect of anonymity also online that previously you couldn't really have. I mean, you'd have to wear some kind of, an, uh, of a costume or go, you know, if you're going to go out and do something or say something, you'd have to disguise yourself in some way physically in order to try to remain anonymous. But now with the internet, it's so easy. To, and see, that would require a lot of work and a lot of effort to go through all these hurdles. And most people would be like, yeah, well, I, I don't, you know, I'm not going to mess with that because it's just too, too much work. But these days now it's so easy to become anonymous. I mean, people, predators are out there doing it all the time. They're putting up fake profile pictures and fake bios and all kinds of things to try to gain confidence and, and go after kids and whatever. That's just one aspect. But people are doing this all over the place through, you know, on YouTube, on Facebook. They're making comments. And, man, there's, <laughs> there's so much here. The, the whole online world also can... can lend itself to allow for this group think and mob mentality. And all of these things play together. And, and, and forgive me, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with my words this morning just because this is such a massive topic and there's so many things at, at play that you just need to be aware of. And, and everything I'm saying right now, I see a lot of heads nodding. It's not like this is brand new information to you. I'm sure you've all probably thought about these things before. But we need to keep ourselves reminded of these, especially if you are on social media, which, you know, there's a lot of benefit that can be had. We as a church use social media to get the message out, the, the sermons, the preaching, things like that, to stay in communication with one another. You know, we, we can um, coordinate events and, and there's a lot of great uses 
for these things. And, and I'm not saying that the tool itself is evil. That's like saying that a computer is evil because people can go and, and look at pornography online. The tool isn't evil, but it's how you use the tool that is what really matters. And there are a lot of ways that, uh, and there's, there's things like, I don't think Facebook or, or YouTube or whatever are inherently evil pieces of, of software. Now, maybe some of the people behind them are evil, but, but the, their, their actual tool that they have created isn't, there's nothing wrong with that. Like if you, it, depending on how you use it, it's completely fine. I mean, I think it's great to be able to see pictures and videos of other family members that live in other parts of the country and be able to kind of communicate easier and, and, and be, feel like you're a little bit more involved and see more what's going on. I think that's great. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But there's so many other things that present themselves to be problems. And um, especially when it comes to interactions and your communication with other people. And, um, you know, obviously the, the big thing is when it comes to religion, that's what oftentimes a lot of people will bring up. But just in general, you know, there's, there seems to be a lack of respect for people. And people are, can get real quick to get hot on some issues and start mouthing off and spouting off their mouth in, in areas that if you had been standing face to face with that same exact person, you would never act that way or say those things. And, and we need to make sure that you don't fall into that same trap just because you might see those types of things happening around you or other people making these comments. Now, another thing that you have to be aware of is that you lose a lot of nonverbal communication sometimes when it comes to comments and writing things, that's actually very important. It's really easy to misconstrue intentions. And oftentimes, you know, there's, there's drama and fightings and strivings that happen for no reason, really. It's just because people read something wrong or you miss a word or you, you know, when, when, you're, when you're speaking, your intonation and your voice, and there's so many cues that, that come across to help express what it is you're trying to express. And when it's all just typed out, and especially in shorthand, and you're using all these shortcuts, it, it, the, the whole meaning doesn't get there. So we gotta be aware of that. But um, this, this group think or mob mentality that we need to be aware of, look at, uh, Exodus chapter 23, verse number one, the Bible says, Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Now, first of all, we see over and over again, the Bible tells us not to bear false witness and not to raise a false report. One of the problems in social media is that there is a lot of fake news out there, a lot of fake information, information that just lies or just simply not true. Amen. And what happens with social media, and this, and this is a new phenomenon also, is that there's people out there that put out false information, and it's, you know, the love of money is the root of all evil, and, and there's, there's websites and there's people that will put out fake information just to make money. Because the whole point, if you can make some type of a juicy headline, something that's going to be clickbait or something that you think people are going to want to get into, there's actually a means of making money off of that. So if you could get a certain amount of traffic and visitors to a website, there's paid advertising on those sites. So these people get paid just by putting up whatever. And there's a lot of people that don't care about being honest and truthful. All they care about is making more money. So they don't have the morality to say, hey, I'm not going to bear a false report or a false witness. I don't care who it hurts. I don't care about the truth. I just care about making money. There's plenty of people out there like that. So they, they, they insert these lies into the social media and you just may be unsuspecting and you see some friend that you know, oh wow, I know this person, they posted this, you read it and then you share it and this is how this stuff spreads, right? Because oftentimes too, so many people don't even want to do any research on their own. And if something just kind of fits their worldview or if they already come to a conclusion, oh, well, that makes sense. I'm just going to share this. And you don't even know what you're posting and, and you're kind of becoming complicit with these false reports and false witnesses. And we need to be aware of that. 
Verse number two says, Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. So there is a, a, a tendency, a sinful tendency, for people to follow a multitude, to go along with what a lot of other people are doing or saying and kind of just, just get caught up in what everyone else is saying. And the Bible is saying, hey, you shouldn't follow a multitude to do evil. And oftentimes with social media, what you can find is what you appear to just be this big multitude of people. But in many cases, it's not just, uh, it's not like a majority, but it's, it's a weird, again, another weird, twisted sense of reality. And this is one of the ways that media has been manipulating and propagandizing different um, social norms that they want to push. Example, someone who's creating um, movies and television shows has an agenda of wanting to normalize a sinful behavior. Well, it's very easy for them to insert that into their programming that they have on television into their miniseries and their dramas and their TV shows and whatever so that you are exposed to this stuff on a more regular basis than you normally would be out in the real world. See, the television and the movie screen, this is the precursor to what we have now with the internet. It's still mass media. You're, you're getting the same content and information getting pushed to so many different people. And the more you get involved, and, and you know what? It's all fake. Everything you see on TV is fake. All these movies, they're fake. It's all staged. You get on a stage, they set it up. They have props, they have cameras, and they, they say the same lines over and over and over and over again until they make it sound the way they want to. And at the end of the day, you know, those people who die on the screen and stuff, they go home. And they come back to die again another day in another movie, another situation. None of it's real. It's all just made up and fictitious. And there's so many things even on, you know, you say, well, yeah, I understand that with movies. They're just, I mean, it's, it's like putting a, a novel on, on a screen. Okay, it's not just the movies, though. There's so many, the, 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 you know, they call it the reality TV shows. Guess what? Those are fake. They want to tell you it's reality. Like, this is really happening. And they, they make it look like, well, we just turn the camera on and this is reality. No, that's still staged. They still are behind the scenes manipulating and just and, and twisting a reality that they want you to see. So what we have to realize is all of these things are at play when you go on the internet. There is a push, there is an agenda from certain people, especially certain people in power, to allow you or make you see things and to skew your perspective and your vision of, of what's right and what's wrong or, or just what the public at large believes or feels or thinks. The more you see adultery in front of your eyes, the more you're going to think, well, everybody's doing it. The more you see sodomites just inserted into, into life and everything else, you're going to think, wow, well, there, this must be one on every, you know, every other house has got a sodomite living there. And it's like, no, that's not reality. But they, they try to get you to think this way. And when you close yourself off into just certain groups, and this is how a lot of... <laughs> A lot of people or things get, it, get into extremes, especially in politics and things like that. You surround yourself in just, in just hearing one thing and people just repeat these things over and over again in their small little groups and, and it kind of takes off into another direction. Now, the Bible says here that we're not to follow a multitude to do evil. Turn, if you would, to Romans chapter 14. And let's apply this to what people might be using social media for these days. 
There's been a lot of drama and a lot of strife and a lot of problems going on in good, godly churches because Satan has been attacking. Because the enemy, the adversary, doesn't like the work that's being done. There's a lot of souls being saved. There's a lot of good being done. So the enemy and the children of Belial are going to come in and try to destroy. And they're going to go around trying to split churches, trying to um, you know, get wicked people inside to, to stop the, the attempts that are going on. The Bible warns about this over and over and over again. I'm not going to go into all the details on that. You could read in Jude and 2 Peter chapter 2 and so many other places in the Bible where he's, well, I cease not to warn you day and night with tears. You know, watch out for these people. Watch out for for the infiltrators. They're going to come in. They're going to feast among you. They have eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin. They are coming in to destroy and it's going to happen. So it shouldn't be like it's some strange thing or some weird thing when these things happen. They're going to happen. But the way that we deal with them, and especially in today's society, is very important. It used to be when things like this would happen, it's not public display. It's not like everyone's going to know about it because you have a bunch of local churches and when Satan's coming in to try to, to destroy a great work that's being done, you know, it would take a long time for information to even pass to, for other people to even know that anything was going on. But nowadays, it's like you could get involved immediately in situations just because the information is just so fast. And I've warned about this previously, when I, when, last week when I was talking about a lot of things that have happened. We need to make sure that not only are we not following a multitude to do evil, but that we just can wait and sit back and, and wait for information to come out because you start seeing information is coming out really quickly. You still don't have all the detail. If you're not there, you don't really know what's going on. You don't know the full of it. And we got to hold back and reserve judgment until you get the information. And oftentimes you might never have all of the information and what you don't want to do is be too hasty to get involved and jump on board and just start spouting off your opinions and, and maybe even possibly raising false reports because you're just going off of something else that you heard. The Bible says actually let's skip over Romans 14 because I, I don't want to skip past this point that I'm making. Uh, James chapter 1. Turn to James chapter 1. We'll come back to Romans 14 maybe later. I, like I said before, this is going to be uh, a two-parter, so there's, there's plenty of time to get into everything here. The Bible says in Proverbs 25, 2, it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. God gets glory and, and honor and, and we love God when he's able to conceal things that, you know, don't need to be just, just publicly exposed for everyone. And, and God has the right to do that. But the Bible says the honor of kings to search out a matter. It's, it's a duty and responsibility of the king to say, well, we need to uncover every stone and just make sure that we understand everything that happened here because there is an earthly judgment that the king would be responsible for. Now, God is the ultimate judge. And if God decides to conceal a matter and forgive and hide a sin or something, hey, praise God for that, for, for being gracious and merciful. And his judgment is always going to be right. But on this earth, when it comes to people who are, who are put in positions of authority, hey, their job is to seek out a matter and just make sure that they get all the information and they know what's true and can discern right from wrong. See, God knows all the truth. He knows what's right and wrong. No one's going to lie to him. He knows everything. But for us as human beings, we need to you know, make sure, especially a king or especially someone who's ruling, someone who's in charge and making decisions, they need to know 
The whole truth of the matter. Look at James chapter 1, verse number 19. The Bible says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. So you ought to be really ready to hear. Really ready to receive, to process information. Let's hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Make sure you get all the information. Just, just be real quick. Okay, I'm ready to hear. I'm ready to hear. What do you have to say? But then it says, slow to speak and slow to wrath. You're not supposed to just immediately react. You need to take the time to process and to respond appropriately and not emotionally. You need to process the information and, and say, what am I receiving? Is there any other op alternatives? There's some information I might be missing before I make a judgment. It says, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. And unfortunately, what happens is we end up turning, you're in James chapter 1, just flip over to 1 Peter chapter 4. We're going to get a lot of Bible this morning and this evening. There's a lot of Bible that will cover all the sins that take place on social media and that we need to really make sure that we're watching out for. And I think the number one thing, and I might just spend the rest of the morning talking about this, is being a busybody or a gossip or a tattler and getting involved in situations that are really none of your business. And throwing in your two cents and spouting off. And you know what? There's so many times where it's like, you know what? This has nothing to do with me at all. I don't need to right every wrong and tell everybody why they, you know, when things are going on, especially bad things are going on in other people's lives, or you don't know all this information, back off. It's okay. Not everyone needs to know what you think about this latest video that just came out. 1 Peter chapter 4, look at verse number 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. The Bible teaches, look, none of you ought to suffer, he says, not as a murderer, not as a thief, right? You should definitely, as believers, should you be murderers and thieves or evildoers? No. But look in the same exact sentence, it says, or a busybody in other men's matters. Now, those are all pretty serious sins that I've mentioned right before that. I think this is saying don't take light of being this busybody and getting involved in other people's business and just inserting yourself. You weren't there to begin with. You don't need to add yourself to certain situations. Turn to 1 Timothy chapter 5. And this is exactly why, you know, when, when all that strife and the problems were happening with Steadfast and, the, and, and especially with the Satellite Church and Jacksonville and everything else, I'm not going around and now I'm just going to start making all my videos and getting all, you know, and, and adding my two cents. My only involvement with them has been, and, and I'm not even going to go into it because it doesn't really matter. I tried to, to get involved just to help. Hey, what can I do to help? And that was, that was where it stood because, it, you know what, it wasn't my matter. It wasn't my business. I wasn't going to go in and start telling, oh, no, now this is what you need to do because it wasn't, I wasn't involved. Now, people like Pastor Anderson got involved because he was brought into it. Someone went to him and was like, hey, we need help and inserted him into the situation. So he helped. But I'm not going to go and insert myself and say, no, 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 you all need to be doing things. That, that's not my place. And you know what? It's not your place either or everyone else that just lives all over the country or all over the world to just tell everyone else, this is how you do it. You know why? One of the big reasons because you don't know everything that happened even still. I don't care if you've watched every single video that's been put up online. You still don't know all the facts. You still don't know. I mean, there's information that I know that still hasn't all been put out online. 
Why? Because everyone doesn't need to know every single little detail. As far as I know, the main information is out there, but, it, but the, the point is, people get so quick, so quick to make judgments, so quick to just get involved in areas that's not, you know, it causes this extra strife and extra problems where it doesn't even need to be. Like it has nothing to do with you, yet now all of a sudden you're gonna get so bent out of shape that you're quitting church and you're doing this, and you know, it's like, whoa, hold on a minute. You don't even know the, the extent of everything. And and it's none of your business, and that's gonna affect you that much. We need to we need to be quick to hear and slow to speak. Look at first Timothy chapter five, verse number thirteen. The Bible says, and with all they learn to be idle wandering about from house to house and not only idle but tattlers also and busybodies speaking things which they ought not i will therefore that the younger women marry bear children guide the house give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully for some are already turned aside after satan one of the biggest sins and one of the biggest problems with social media is the gossiping and it's beyond just this one situation or instance i'm just talking about in general now, in the context here of 1 Timothy 5, it's referring, it's talking about women. Because, let's be honest, women probably have the most, uh, the, the hardest time with this type of a sin, way more than men do. Now, I'm not saying men can't gossip. I'm not saying men can't sin the same sin. But it's something that is more prone to women than it is to men. It's just natural. It's part of their, their sinful flesh nature to get involved in, in all these areas and maybe it's because I, I don't know why I'm not even gonna get into why doesn't matter why doesn't matter but the Bible's teaching us here is that when the younger when there's younger widows they learn to be idle so when they have nothing to do when they have a bunch of free time they end up wandering about from house to house and you all could probably think of you know these busybody women that just are going and and Oh, what's going on here? Did you hear about neighbor so-and-so? Did you hear about this person? Do you know what's going on there? And just talking about everything that's going on in everybody else's lives. And you know what? The Bible condemns that. The Bible says you shouldn't be going about from house to house and being tattlers and busybodies and, and talking about this trash and this dirt that's going on in other people's lives because it has no value, it has no benefit, and all you're doing is just gossiping about people. But the problem we have now is that it's even easier than actually having to open up your door and to walk out and to go from house to house. Because you could literally be going from house to house in seconds just by opening up your phone and turning on that app. And now all of a sudden, you're going house to house to house and gossiping and telling, you know what? I don't care who you are. I don't care who you're, you're married to. Gossip is gossip. And it's not right. It's not right for, for people in the pew. It's not right for, for pastors. It's not right for pastors' wives. It ain't right to just be gossiping about things that are going on. It's still gossip. And I'll tell you this much. If the shoe fits, you know, apply it to yourself. Just wear it. The Word of God condemns being busybodies and tattlers and going on and on about this information. And you know, the person who's, who's guilty of being a busybody and a tattler and a gossip, they'll always tell you a reason why it's not gossip. Oh, well, no, 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 you don't understand. See, I had to talk about this. Oh, no, no, no. Look, it, be honest with yourself for once and just say, you know what? I'm being a gossip. When I'm talking about things that there's no reason that all these people need to know every detail about everything that's happening here in a bad, especially in bad situations, because it's always the dirt, right? And you know, let's face it, that's what gossip is. The Bible is not condemning people for talking about some good thing that another person did. Hey, did you hear about brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so? She you know, had this great opportunity and, and let this person cry. You know, that's not gossip. You'd be encouraging someone and edifying someone and, and lifting someone else up. 
That's not gossip. That's edification. Gossip is when you're talking about bad things and, and, and other people, and it's like, look, you don't need to be getting involved. Now, there's a difference between exposing someone publicly. You got a false prophet. You got someone who's deceiving people. It's not gossip to expose somebody and say, hey, watch out for this person. We're marking them. We're avoiding them. This is what they do. That's different than then go around and just start talking, well, do you know that this person is, you know, they're following them and they, and they commit this sin and they're doing, you know. Everyone should know what God's, I shouldn't have to define it for you. You should already have a pretty good idea of what it means to be, and that's why the Bible uses um, tattlers, busybodies, you know, other words to kind of help you along. What's a tattler? Don't be a tattletale, right? Don't be telling stories. Don't be tattling on things that people have done wrong. Verse 14, I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. For some are already turned aside after Satan. This is something that is going to look bad upon Christianity, especially upon people who believe the Bible. When outsiders start seeing a bunch of gossiping and backbiting and railing and, and biting and devouring one another, to be like, why do I want to have anything to do with that? And you could say, oh, but, the, but, but what I'm saying is true. It doesn't have to be a lie in order to be gossip. Let me repeat that. It doesn't have to be a lie in order to be gossip. Just because something's true, it doesn't mean it's everybody's business. You could have someone commit some sin, and it's true. They broke God's commandment, they sinned. But that doesn't mean it's everybody's business that everybody needs to know about it. Now, I understand there may be certain cases where something has to be brought to light and brought to the attention of everybody to mark and avoid a wicked person. I get it. But you need to be very, very, very careful that you're not just going above and beyond that exception to the rule. Because this gives, when, when people get involved in this, it gives occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. And, and it brings a stain and a black eye upon what's being done. All the good that's being done, and, and it's bringing a bad mark when, when people start turning and gossiping and being tattlers and busybodies. Because for some are already turned aside after Satan. Turn to uh, Leviticus chapter 19. Leviticus chapter 19. And going back to what I was bringing up about the, you know, kind of a false reality, I don't think that this affects the majority of people, especially, you know, and, and I'll narrow it, I'll pare it down just to our movement, to people who believe like-minded this isn't like some majority of people all have this problem. The problem is from a relatively small number of people, but they're so idle and they have so much time to spend on social media that they could comment on everything and make it appear that there's all this stuff going on and there's all this drama and there's all these people that are all having these problems when it's really not that many people, it's always the same people over and over again. And if you're someone that's prone to getting involved in business that's not yours and meddling with strife that doesn't belong to you, the best thing for you to do is just to not have social media at all. Just to get rid of it. Unplug from it. You don't need it. You definitely don't need it. It's not going to hurt you to disconnect at all. 
If anything, it'll probably just do you some good. Leviticus chapter 19, look at verse number 16. The Bible says, Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Going all the way back to the Old Testament law. Thou shalt not be a talebearer. What's a talebearer? A storyteller. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Now, in the context of these three verses, what we're looking at, this is talking about against your neighbor, against your people, against the people of God, thy brother. Especially when we're dealing with brothers and sisters in Christ. The Bible says not to hate them in your heart. You have a born again believer you know, you better not be hating them in your heart. How dwelleth the love of God in you if you hate your brother? And not only that, it says you're not supposed to avenge. You don't need to be bearing any grudges. You know, if someone's done you wrong, you don't need to go and, and publicize that to everyone and then just hold this grudge against that person. Why don't you love that neighbor as thyself? Think about what you would want to have done to you. You screw up. You sin. You make a mistake. You do something wrong. That would, do you want a bunch of people gossiping about you and talking behind your back? I wouldn't. Or what if, what if someone just hears a rumor? You don't even know if it's true. You hear a rumor. Are you going to go and just start spreading that and, and telling other people? Well, would you want that done to you? No proof, no evidence. Oh, I just heard this. Oh, so-and-so said this. We're supposed to stop that right in its tracks. If you're going to be right with God, you, you rebuke that person that wants to come to you and, and gossip and start spreading this information and just say, no, we're not going to have anything to do with that. Um, Proverbs 11, verse number 12. You could turn, turn to Proverbs 18. I'm going to read Proverbs 11 for you. Proverbs 11, verse number 12, the Bible, the Bible reads, He that is void of wisdom despiseth his neighbor, but a man of understanding holdeth his peace. You know what it means to hold your peace? It means to be quiet. A tale bearer revealeth secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. Notice the contrast there with the Bible's trying to do in the Proverbs. It's a contrast between good and bad. This is what you do and this is what you don't do. And it's saying here, a tail bearer, this is the bad, a tail bearer reveals secrets. Tail bearers are going to go around and start spreading abroad and telling everybody things that were provided to them may be in confidence. And they're just going to blab their mouth and open up and just let it all spill out. But he that is of a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. Now again, just to be clear, I'm not talking about grievous sins and crimes and just sweeping them under the rug. And that's not what Scripture is talking about because when you take everything in context and you, and you look at the whole, you're going to see the, the commands to call things out and to make them known. But there's a big difference between those very serious things and everything else. <laughs> Again, it's, it's, it's the general rule that we're following here, not the, the exception of the, of the specific really bad situation. Proverbs 18, look at verse number 6. The Bible says, A fool's lips enter into contention. Contention is fighting. It's a fool that's just, that, that with their lips, with their mouth, they're just entering into fighting, and his mouth calleth for strokes. A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. The words of a tail bearer are as wounds. They go down into the innermost parts of the belly. 
We need to be so careful with our words. The Bible says the words of a tailbearer are as wounds. It's like getting hurt physically. The Bible says that the, the tongue is a small member, but how great a fire it kindleth. You know, you could just say, oh, they're just words. No, oh, words have a lot of power. Words have a lot of impact. Words can actually hurt people. You need to be very careful with your words. A tail bearer, someone who's going around and, and gossiping and spreading rumors or, or just repeating things that you've heard, telling stories, they're like wounds. They go down to the innermost parts of the belly. Proverbs 20, 19 says, He that goeth about as a tail bearer revealeth secrets. And, and this is an interesting connection here. He that goeth about as a tail bearer revealeth secrets. Therefore, Meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. Oftentimes, what you'll find is that the person, to your face, they'll flatter you. They'll just tell you how wonderful they are, how, you, how wonderful you are. They'll tell you how great you are to butter you up, to try to gain your confidence. So that way, when you open up to them and talk to them, you know what they're going to do? They're going to turn around behind your back and start telling it to everybody else. So if you don't want the tail bearer revealing secrets, watch out for the person who flatters with their tongue because they're probably a tail bearer. They're definitely not someone you can trust. Watch out for the flat. The flatterer is someone who's going to be, there is all kinds of red flags that should be going off your mind. And look, a flattery, flattering is not just receiving a compliment. Especially receiving a compliment where compliments do. You cook some great meal or something, someone, hey, that was a great meal. Thank, you know, that's normal. Just, just, but, but when people just go way over the top, almost to the point of embarrassment, right? And they just won't stop. That's flattery. Or especially in areas where you're like, well, I, I burned the toast. Oh man, this is the best toast I've ever had. You're like, hold on a second. <laughs> this doesn't add up. This isn't making any sense, right? Now, again, don't take every, you know, you got to take each situation and have some discernment because I don't want to get someone in trouble who's trying to make a joke either. Right? <laughs> You're a flatterer. No, <laughs> but it is something that is very serious when it comes to flattery. Watch out for these people because they're going to be the ones that are going to be the tail because they don't care about you at all. They're going to turn around behind your back and gossip about you. Proverbs 26. Turn to Proverbs chapter 26. Verse number 20. The Bible reads, Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no tail bearer, the strife ceaseth. Very wise statement here. It's just saying, just like when you run out, you have a campfire, you run out of wood, guess what? The fire is going to go out. There's no fuel. It's just going to burn out. Likewise, when you don't have somebody instigating things and telling these stories and stirring people up, the strife is going to cease. The, the, the fighting is going to end. The problem is when you have the tail bearer just going in and causing the problems and causing divisions. We need to watch out for that, but also we need to make sure just for yourself that you're not being the tail bearer. That you're not just spreading information that you know is going to be causing problems and causing fights between people and, and messing around with people's credibility or whatever. And just, just saying, well, no, sometimes you don't just need to say. Sometimes you just need to shut your mouth. Verse number 21, as coals are to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. The words of a talebearer bearer as wounds and they go down in the innermost parts of the belly. We already read that in another proverb. It must be important. Verse number 23, burning lips and a wicked heart are like a pot shirt covered with silver dross. That is a bad combination, having burning lips and a wicked heart. 
What does it mean have burning lips? Lips that just can't stop. You just can't control your mouth. And then combine that with a wicked heart. Disaster. Verse 24, he that hateth dissembleth with his lips and layeth up deceit within him. Dissembling. I mean, you think of assembling. You're building something together. You're building it up. Dissembling as you're tearing it down. The person that hates is tearing down other people. Don't tell me that you love your brother or your sister in Christ when you're tearing them down with your words. Because that's not love. And the Bible's warning about that. We ought to be very, very careful. Because these are, these, are these, these are serious problems that not only would it be a sin for you, but it also just does damage and I think brings reproach upon the name of Christ. If this is how you treat one another, if this is how things work, that is why so many, you know, I, we talk to people all the time out soul winning. And there's all these different stories. And some of the worst problems that happen is that people just get out of church because they're like, you know what? I was part of church for a long time. And then there's like this split and there's these factions and you've got people gossiping between here and here and all these problems going on. You know, people are just like, I don't want to have anything to do with that anymore. I thought this is supposed to be a family. I suppose we're supposed to love each other here. I thought this is supposed to be a place where we could serve God together. And I go there and all of a sudden people are just talking about me from the moment I walk in the door. And it puts a bad taste in their mouth and they never want to go back to that again. If that's the way church is, I don't want to have anything to do with church. Now, obviously, you can't judge all churches and all people based on one experience. It's not right for someone to do that. But it is a reality. It is something that people do. And it's all the more reason to make sure that you're not like that, that you're not going to be the cause of someone else going, well, I don't want to have anything to do with that. I'm not going to start just spreading rumors. And look, it doesn't, you could, you know, some people do it publicly and it's just open and on, on Facebook and on Twitter and on whatever social media is throw out lies and slanders and gossip and railing accusations and they don't even care. Yeah, that does a lot of damage. But you know what? Even if you don't do it publicly, you still got to watch out for being guilty of gossip. Gossip only needs two people. Talking about that third. And when there is no good reason at all for you to be bringing up someone else, especially something bad about someone else, then don't do it. Because that's gossip. Verse number 25 here, When he speaketh fair, believe him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart, whose hatred is covered by deceit. His wickedness shall be showed before the whole congregation. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. A lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. And that's going on about lying. Now, I'm going to pause it here, trying to find a good stopping point. There is a lot more to this than maybe even in two sermons, but if you aren't able to make it back tonight, I mean, hopefully what you've heard already should be enough to make you pause and make you say, I need to think about things before I speak. I need to put a filter on my mouth and make sure that I'm not being involved in gossip or being a busybody. It blows my mind sometimes how much time people can have to be on social media. It really does boggle my mind. I have like, I, I, I maybe can get on once a day for like a few minutes. But as soon as you start typing comments and everything else, and you, leave, you, know, you get involved in these conversations, you know how much time that takes? I've done that before. That's crazy. It's just a waste of time. And I'm going to get into that tonight. I don't see how people can do it. And sometimes one of the best things to do is just unplug from it. 
being a, a tattler and a gossip and a busybody, it's not a light thing. It, it, it has bad impacts and bad ramifications for many people involved. And you need to make sure that you don't have that type of an attitude because you're going to be doing more damage than anything. And especially in the context of Christianity, in the context of you just being known as being a Christian, even if it has nothing to do with other churches or anything like that, you guys have about anyone for any reason that's going to bring a bad light on, oh, is this how a Christian person should act? A Christian lady or a Christian man? Is that how we should be behaving ourselves? Well, let's bow our eyes and have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for, um, for all these biblical truths that are timeless, that it doesn't matter what tools or technology is, is in our current day or age, Lord, that your truths stand regardless and that we need to learn how to apply them to our, to our daily life and apply them to, to the situations we're in. Lord, give us wisdom, give us understanding. Lord, help us to, to keep control over our tongue and, and be able to only speak those things which are right and true and also which are appropriate, Lord. Just because something is true doesn't mean it's always appropriate to be speaking them. God, I pray that you please help us to, to have that discernment and that we wouldn't be getting involved in all of these scandals and dramas that have nothing to do with us and just continuing to, to go online and go public and just start telling everybody um, what we think about all these things. Lord, I pray that you please help us to, um, to keep control of our, of our hearts our eyes and our mouths. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.